Listen, coming to a, a winery is always cool and neat to be out in the vineyard, but to be able to get a behind the scenes look at how things are working is even better. Back at uh, Fielding Estate Winery with uh, the man himself, uh, winemaker Richie Roberts. Uh, okay, good stuff going on. Yeah, we're a working winery, that's for sure. You came on the right day. What, what's happening here? Yeah, we're just pressing off some red, so you came right at the right time. This is some Cab Sauv that has been fermenting in tanks inside for a few weeks, and it's time for it to come off the skin, so that beautiful wine you see right there is gonna go to go into barrels inside right now. What's this baby called? Uh, it's a press, this so is this press. is, yeah, it's a bladder so press, how, yep. How much, how many grapes are in there? So right now we've got about 10 tons in here. 10 tons? Yeah. Yeah. And you're squeezing all of that. Like, is this wine? It is. It's wine. You can drink that if you want. Grab a glass. But the, the, but the alcohol really isn't there yet. The alcohol is yes. there. It's, oh, it's not finished. Should but I dip a glass in there? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. So, so it's finished wine. It's not finished wine, but it is wine. Wow. Like, it's probably about 13 and a half, 14 percent alcohol. Obviously, it's not going to taste the same as what you get out of a bottle. But it's interesting to see the evolution of what it tastes like now. It's really cloudy here too, right? Yeah, it's always it's always pretty turbid at this point, right? We're gonna let it settle inside, then it's gonna go into barrels, then it's gonna age for quite a while in barrel. Do you know how long it's gonna be in a barrel for? I would say probably anywhere between a year and two. Is yeah. it an award winner? Might be. Like you're gonna have to like, wait and see. Like these ones? Yeah, like these ones here. So these are two our, two of our gold medal winners from this year. Uh, we had three along with our sparkling. So there's a 2018 Cabernet Franc estate bottled, and what estate bottled means is we grow our own grapes for it. That one was exciting to get because 2018 was a bit of a challenging year, Can right? Can I open this up? Go for it, yeah. And Cabernet Franc is, is uh, kind of our go-to red variety around here. It's the red grape variety that we do the most of, and it's probably our most successful. There we go, well cheers So pretty that. exciting to get a, an award for that. Um, yes. How big are rewards? Like, are they big for you guys, or like, who's it, who's it for? It's always nice to be recognized. Uh, it's not something that we worry too much about or lose sleep at at night, but it's always nice to be recognized. And there was a lot of local wineries that got recognized this year. Uh, Malibor got Canadian Wine of the Winery of the Year this year. Couldn't happen to a better group of people there. Like, how big is that for the area? It's huge, it's huge, yeah. So it's, so it's over 200 wineries from around Canada being judged. They got Winery of the Year. Uh, we were in the top 25, which for us is is really good. It's a great uh, great accolade for ourselves. And uh, we got some really nice wines that got gold medals this year, which is always good to see. Great. And this one is the Cabernet Syrah. Cabernet Syrah, yeah. It's one of our most popular wines every year. So it's a blend of uh, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Syrah. Just and the blend on that changes every single year, uh, but it's always one of our most popular wines. And we don't make a lot of either of these wines. Right, so they're kind of our smaller production wines, um, stuff that we really take pride in making, and it's good to see those get gold. You always have burgers just sitting out here, ready to always. be, always, yeah, <laughs> ready yeah, to be definitely. devoured. <laughs> to Breakfast pair. of champions. You're always, you're, you're always pairing, right? <laughs> A delicious burger to pair with your yeah. award-winning wine. Yeah, maybe it's, they're not always here, but I'm glad to have them for sure. It's a good pairing for sure. Cheers. Congrats, man. Good Thanks. Seeing you. We'll continue hanging out and fielding. We know who we got up to. That is a great sound. Good morning, welcome back to Fielding. And they're always kind of changing and always adding new things to the fray, like a brand new craft cider, peach cider. Great to be here with uh, the man himself. Clark, how you doing Clark? Fantastic yourself. Good buddy. Awesome. I don't get to talk to you very much. I get stuck talking with Kurt and Heidi <laughs> and all those other guys. Heidi the but cellar. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's, uh, it's good to see you. But listen, you say the cellar. Yeah. But it's pretty cool because you guys came up with the design for this new can. We did. Just a little conversation in the lab and a little idea and want to make it vibrant, expressive, and Miami Vice, explosive summer. Totally. That's amazing. Okay, so what's, what's, what's so great about this peach cider? Everything's local. So same apples we get from Mountain View Orchards around the corner. Uh, peaches, local, using honey locally from Rosewood just around the corner as well. So everything's within our... Uh, Why do you need to put a little honey in there? Just add a little bit of sweetness to it, really round out the acid, the acid structure from apples and the peaches. Plus, it never hurts to have a little bit of extra profile and depth. Yeah, okay. Um, so we have beer, which is brewed. Yep. You have spirits, which are distilled. Yes. Wine that is 
Fermented. Fermented. Cider, that is. Fermented. That's how you make it as well? Yep. Same thing as, it's very similar to white wine production. Very similar. Got the apples. Yes. Skins off the apples. Yes. If you, kept uh, the, if you kept the skins on for cider, what would that? Oh, it's, oh you can leave skins on, but everything get, gets pressed um, all locally for us at Puttycomb. And it's, it's, a, it's a much different process than a grape press. It's a different press, but overall it's very similar for the production once it's in a liquid form. Do you have enjoyability as far as like creating cider? Oh, like is, there, is, there, is there the satisfaction that you get from, I don't know, putting, putting the grapes into the wine bottle? Absolutely, because with wine, you can't add different fruits. You can use have the grapes, your fermentation vessels, yeast selections, the terroir. With cider, you can use botanicals, fruits, whatever it may be, your fermentation you vessels. You have to follow the, the recipe. Exactly, it's not governed like that. And plus being in Niagara, we are, surrounded by everything, botanicals, fruit wise. A little bit of this, a little, little bit of that, a little bit of this. And yeah, that's where you're always creating new stuff because yeah. here, this is, the, this is the original, right? The hard cider. That's correct. Right, and then we worked in the rosé, the cherry rosé. Yep. Okay, so then what's, what's next? What's going on in that noodle of yours? So like I said, this is our first peach one. Uh, coming out sometime next year, we'll have our second batch of hop cider. We always have a few things going on here and there. Kurt yeah. wants something to do with some maple syrup, so. Maple we'll, syrup uh, working in there too. We'll toss some ideas around and okay. let the brain power get to work. Okay, so the only way you can get these ciders is here at the winery. Or online. Or, or online. Um, awesome, we haven't even cheers. Cheers to that, pal. Cheers, Monday morning starting off right. Yeah, right. You can take a sip, throw that down, and then we'll tackle some of the wine domes. And we didn't even highlight that delicious sandwich also made by Selma too. Is there's some brie and some ham, a ciabatta bun with a little, little uh, spice to it too. Yummy. Well, good morning and welcome back to Fielding. Come on in, we're all cozy in the, <laughs> in the wine domes with, uh, with Heidi. Good to see you, Heidi. Yeah, good to see you. Awesome. Um, every time we come, and we, we're here for a minute, yeah. but you always have something new and exciting mm -hmm. to talk about. Like the domes were here last year, yes. right? Things mm -hmm. have changed a little bit, yeah. um, but you still have to reserve them. Yeah, it's best to reserve. Like we do have one for walk-ins right. and we try to accommodate as best we can, but during the weekends, reservations are good. But this, these are so great for you guys because it just extends your season out here. It does, right? and it gives us 10 extra tables um, throughout the day, which is awesome for customers and for our staff yeah. too. And you have like an in-house chef, right? Yeah. Nathan and, and Selma. And Selma, wow. yeah. Right. Selma started with us at the beginning of the season and we were able to keep her all year round because of all the fun things that okay, we're doing. Well, what, do we, what do we got in front of yeah. us here? So along with the charcuterie and the cheese plates, we just introduced the chocolate sampler. So I love this because I was introduced to Tatiana from Sucre Confectionery in St. Catharines. Her beautiful, gorgeous chocolates. This is strawberry milkshake. It's um, white chocolate with a strawberry puree in it. All single origin, all um, fair trade. And then she does the very dark chocolate. This um, one, yeah. Yep. And that has pieces of dried apricot and cherry in it. And it's delicious. And then Chef Nathan came up with this brownie. Um, with the ganache, which actually has the red conception in it. It took a little bit of time. He, I think he was getting angry with us. We made him, we asked him to do a few different trials because we wanted to get it just right. Can't be too sweet. Okay, so how many times? <laughs> it's four, four <laughs> times. <laughs> Tough job, we have to keep sampling the, the, uh, the, official, the brownie. Were you the official taste tester? Like, it's almost there. And okay, he's so like, what, what were you looking, let's try them. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so um, this one? one, you could, well start with that okay, one, the one? strawberry milkshake. So that's gonna okay. go perfect with the sparkling rosé. Okay. Because it's creamy still, it's got that white chocolate component and that hint of the strawberry oh is my so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Isn't that so delicious? I'm obsessed with this right now. Bite first, sip. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Mm -hmm. Good. Then grab a piece of the brownie. Okay. So this is, you'll notice it's not as sweet as you might think from a regular brownie. Right. And if you can get a little of that uh, ganache on it to right pair there, with the, uh, yeah, that's really good. You can okay. taste the red conception actually in it. So good, and I love that it's dense and chewy. It almost has like a fudge component. Okay, for the first three times, what was what wasn't there? <laughs> uh, a little I mean, bit of texture. You just like texture. eating brownies, and you just want to eat more. Uh, some of the sweetness first. We had to bring it down, and then it was um, a little more fudgy. We wanted it a bit more cakey in texture, um, but oh, they were all delicious. He's a you know yeah, an amazing pastry very, chef, very and so is Selma. This one looks like almost too fancy to eat. So this one is just oh, beautiful. Apricot. 
and it's okay. darker chocolate. So this is like your 70%, 75% actually, and that's gonna go great with it's that It's a healthy though. chocolate. Yeah, that's it's right. It's a healthy one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Antioxidants. Yeah. And to go with that big, bold Cab So, we brought that, that on our menu so people could enjoy that with this chocolate. And I think it goes perfectly. Like the Cab So has bigger tannins, it's a bigger wine, so it pairs perfectly with that dark chocolate. Yay! I so know. going online, booking a spot online, yeah, calling book it online, in. Yeah, book online, call. Right. We're really accommodating. We try to help as much as we can, but people have been pretty good at booking. It's been yeah. awesome. And then we're hoping to have some fun things in like maybe January, February, okay. some... Quickly, you have to say double backs. Yes. Double yeah, backs. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we started the day with uh, with Richie, winemaker, talking about some of the award winners because mm -hmm. you guys did very well we at did. the Wine Awards. Um, you have some of the sparkling that have won too. Mm -hmm. Want to do uh, yeah. take a little break? We'll come back and we'll test out some sparkling. Let's do it. Goodness, it's been a tough Monday morning, <laughs> I tell you. Mm, I'm gonna have I some more it. of these delicious brownies. Let's do that on Morning Life. There's a And then there's warm and cozy charcuterie with a fondue. Morning, everybody. Welcome back to <laughs> Fielding. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, Heidi. Hi. <laughs> fondue, huh? Why not? Okay, we're, we're, we're just we're just we're just coming up with ideas for entertaining, yes. right? And I don't think I've ever done fondue. No, Have you? That's what we were just talking about and I'm obsessed with it lately I'm like we need to do fondue when we have our friends over right now we do the charcuterie boards and I said hey Tim what if I had you and Liz over for fondue you'd be like that sounds fancy we definitely are coming <laughs> it just takes it to the next level right yeah that's cool and you can put chocolate in there too you can do you, you, could. Can, you can do a bunch of different yeah. things and you can make your own fondue and there's also um, packs ready to use right. mostly gurir uh, gouda fontina cheese some wine garlic yep and lemon juice and it's delicious. What to pair with it though? Well, we're gonna pair our sparkling brute. Okay. And this goes great with the cheese, the saltiness of the meat. There we go. And you know what, also, when you're entertaining, what is more festive and special than pouring some sparkling? Okay, one second. You have the two glasses? Yes. Why are you pouring it in that glass? We are showing this one because if you don't have traditional flutes, that's okay because actually sparkling wine shows much better in a tulip glass. When Richie was in Champagne, he noticed that all the big Champagne houses were using the tulip glasses because it actually just shows the wine better. You get the nice like green apple and citrus and lemon. And you can see the bubbles. Yeah, you can see the bubbles. Right, and actually you can kind of stick your nose in there yeah. too and give it, a, give it a nice little smell. It's always nice to have the Champagne flutes because they is. seem a little bit fancy. It's celebratory, but, but really when you're actually like tasting the wine, cheers. Cheers. Um, so much nicer. I asked Richie this too earlier on mm -hmm. about the award stuff. Mm -hmm. What's it mean to you or yeah. what does it mean to fielding? For sure. We don't enter a lot of awards. I do love these Canadian National Wine Awards because it really is a celebration of Canadian wine. Whether you win or not, it's just it's nice to see all those wonderful medals coming from all the wineries. I do like it. I mean, I think it's great for the guys in the cellar. It's an acknowledgement of that they're doing a great job and someone else recognizes it other than us and the customers. Yeah. I think it is nice for the customer too. Like. We put together a medal winner pack for the holidays, and that'll be online um, this week. And if they purchase it, we're going to give them a little $25 gift card to celebrate the So, like, you get holidays. all six? All six. Yep. Kay. It's $185, and the gold medals and some of the silver medals, too. So that's fun. I mean, I think for a, the customer, it's like a little confidence boost that they're getting something. Maybe they haven't tried it, but they know it's going to be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you looking forward to the holidays? I am. I yeah. can't wait. Is the tree up yet? It's going to be up, it's coming, it's coming, <laughs> but I'm definitely going to be doing the fondue. Oh, the, fo oh, the, yes. oh, the, yes. oh, the fondue, okay. Yes. There's, oh. <laughs> you don't have to get into it, but there's like fondue rules, do's and don'ts, I, I guess, from the past. Apparently, that, when apparently, I was apparently. researching the fondue, I don't know if we should talk about you this can. on TV. Okay, okay, we have to, because it's so good. Apparently, it's a faux pas to drop the bread or whatever in the pot. If you were a woman, and I don't know when these rules applied or what year, you had to go around the table and kiss all the guests. <laughs> but if you were a man, you'd have to buy a round of drinks. So in all the articles, they said, please be careful, choose your guest list wisely. Right. And I thought, that is so back and, in the and, day. And then you take the keys out of the bowl. <laughs> that's right, that's, that's right. How, that's and how that's the night where we're gonna leave that right? story. All right, and that's how we'll leave. <laughs> Cheers, great Cheers. to see you. <laughs>